I can guarantee that if you grew up on a farm or have been around a farm, have farmers for friends, or even just like to watch YouTube farming videos, you've heard the term bushel. Whether it's a 30,000 bushel bin, or maybe you're running 100 bushel per acre wheat, or you have a 2,000 bushel per hour dryer. A bushel is a bushel, right? Well, maybe, but like, what is a bushel? I grew up on this farm. I'm 40 years old, and I don't think I've ever intentionally seen just one bushel. When I was young, as in quite little, I remember my grandpa telling me that a bushel is two five gallon pails filled pretty much full. Now, I, I can get behind that. I, I know what five gallon pails are, but what's, what's pretty much full? Is it like pretty much full two thirds or three quarters or 98%? Well, let's find out. The British Imperial system of measurements evolved from the hundreds, if not thousands of Roman, Celtic, Anglo-Saxon, and other customary local units employed in the Middle Ages. Traditional names such as pound or foot or gallon were widely used, but inconsistent and varying in size based on region or the person doing the measuring. As you might imagine, the ability to read at this time was near non-existent and large scales in small communities were not common. So in order to create a simpler standard for the working class, the bushel was created, which was a round willow basket with set dimensions. The inside measurements at the bottom were 12 inches in diameter, at the top were 18 inches in diameter, and the sides were 12 inches tall. A basket filled level to the top with, of this was a bushel. The word bushel originally referred to the container itself and later for the unit of measurement. The name bushel comes from Old French, the word boissel or boussel, meaning little box. King Edward the Peaceable, who reigned over Britain from 959 to 975, established early royal standards to enforce uniformity. These standards took the name Winchester after the ancient capital of Britain, where the royal bushel measure was kept. In 1495, King Henry VII instituted the Winchester measure, a set of legal standards of volume which included the Winchester bushel and its dependents. The Winchester bushel is the volume of a simple cylinder 18.5 inches in diameter and eight inches high, equal to eight dry gallons, or 2,150.4202 cubic inches. Let's skip ahead to the Weights and Measures Act of 1824, where the United Kingdom formalized the imperial bushel, or Avery bushel, set at eight imperial gallons, or 2,219.36 cubic inches. The UK and British colonies would change from the Winchester measure to the Imperial measures in 1826. Ten years later, in 1836, the United States formally adopted the Winchester bushel as a standard for measuring grain at 8 US dry gallons equal to 2,150.42 cubic inches, and it remains that number to this day. The current American bushel is simply the Winchester bushel rounded off to two decimal places at 2,150.42. So let's stack these two bushels side by side. Over here, I'm going to have the U.S. or the Winchester bushel. And over here, I'm going to use the Imperial or Avery bushel. They're both eight gallons, but you can start to see everything kind of gets a little bit different. Since I'm in Canada... I'm going to focus on two things being inches and liters. You're going to see that when you start comparing the cubic inches or the liters, that there's about a 3.2% difference between the U.S. Winchester or the Imperial Avery bushel. You probably noticed 
before that we had three different gallons and none of them are the same, which for measuring and consistency sake is all sorts of confusing. So we have a dry gallon that equals 4.405 liters, an imperial gallon, which equals 4.546 liters, and a US liquid gallon, which is 3.785 liters. Let's do some math on my grandpa's old rule of thumb. So we've got a couple of what we commonly call five gallon pails. Truth be told, they're actually 20 liter pails or 5.3 gallons. Using two of these 20 liter pails gives me 40 liters. I would need to fill them 88% full to get our 35.24 liters in order to get a Winchester bushel. Since they're 15 inches tall on the inside, we would need to be about one and three quarter inches down from the top in each pail if we ignore the very slight taper that they have in order to stack them. Now, if we were to add another 1.13 liters to get an Avery bushel, which is 36.37 liters, we are now 91% full, which is an inch and three eighths from the top. I'm pretty okay with calling 88 to 91% pretty much full but in his day in Canada he was most likely referring to the old steel five gallon buckets that were actually five gallons right here's the plastic version of it they're 14 inches tall two of these is 37.85 liters so for a Winchester bushel you need two of these filled 93 percent full or an inch from the top. And then we can add our 1.13 liters for our Avery bushel. That gets us 96% full or 5 eighths of an inch from the top, which is the width of my finger. I gotta give grandpa full marks. I would assume that he was talking about imperial bushels and old five gallon pails, but really any way you slice it, in my books, 88% to 96% is still pretty much two five gallon pails. I always find it hard to, to visualize things in circles. Here it is in cube form. You need 12.91 inches per side, which works out to roughly 12 and 29 30 seconds of an inch. For the Avery bushel, we need 13.04 inches per side or 13 and 1 32nd inches. So we've established that a Winchester bushel is not the same as an Avery bushel. But after that, a bushel is a bushel is a bushel, right? Let's say I have eight US dry gallons of grain. That's gotta be a Winchester US bushel, right? Or it could be, but not likely. I'm gonna show you why. Despite the fact that the standard measure for grains is a volume, we sell it based on a corrected weight because it's much easier to measure a weight, essentially just drive onto a scale, than it is to fill something to measure volume, especially of something that is granular instead of liquid. Make sense? Maybe, maybe not. I'll try and show you. Both of these bins are full. Both of these bins are rated for about 30,000 bushels of storage. This one has wheat, that one has canola. If they were both full, this one full of wheat would hold about 1.8 million pounds or 816 metric ton. This one filled with canola if it was right full, it would have 1.5 million pounds. I think that's 680 metric ton. This is due to the fact that they have a different bushel weight. Since different grains have different kernel sizes and oils and proteins and starches and moisture and so on and so forth, each commodity can have a different density or what we refer to as bushel weight. So we now know that a bushel of canola this is not a bushel, and a bushel of wheat have a different density, or a bushel weight. 
But after that, a bushel of wheat is a bushel of wheat, right? No. You don't get paid for other stuff that's in your grain. Now, it could be chaff, dirt, stones, stalks, bugs, weed seeds, damaged kernels, shriveled kernels, or even other grains. Say there's canola in your wheat. You don't get paid for anything other than what you've contracted. We call this dockage, it needs to be removed from your sample. Another criteria is that your moisture needs to be in an acceptable range below what is commonly called tough, which means it can store stable for an extended period of time. For example, in wheat, it's 14.5%. Any higher, and it increases the chances of spoilage and difficulty handling. As I mentioned earlier, the standard bushel weight for wheat is 60 pounds. So we have to see what that density is, which is what we call test weight. This is found by measuring the weight of your grain of a defined volume. In Canada, the measurement is kilograms per hectoliter, which is the weight of 100 liters of grain. Now, you might be scratching your head if you're pretty savvy at math and already beat me to the punch, but 100 liters is almost three bushels. So in practice, we use one of these. This is a half liter measure. From this half liter, we'll get a weight and then we'll take it to these charts and we will correlate back to a bushel weight. A test weight that is at or above the standard 60 pounds per Avery bushel means high quality grain, can result in a premium to you versus low test weight typically indicates suboptimal growing conditions or harvesting conditions. Grain is prevented from filling completely or maturing and drying naturally due to stresses such as disease, insects, drought, extreme weather such as heat blast or frost or hail or extreme wind where starches in the seed are not able to fully shed the water and allow the grain to ripen and then shrink down to its proper size. Or the grain has matured and dried naturally, then is re-wetted from rain or fog or snow. This can cause grain to begin the germination process and convert oils and starches and proteins into energy. And this will cause a bunch of small little voids inside the seed. Other things that can affect your test weight are protein and moisture. So the volume needs to be adjusted to account for all these differences in test weights. So let's see this math in action. Let's say I wanted to take a load of wheat with my semi and trailer. With this setup, I'm legal to haul 31 metric ton. I know how much I'm hauling based off of the pressures that are on the gauges on the trailer and the semi, the, how much air is in the airbags. I'm not allowed to just fill this thing right to the gunnels. If it was light oats or light barley, perhaps, yes, I could. Definitely not with wheat. To convert this to a volume, this 31 metric tons, 2204.6 pounds per metric ton gives me 68,343.22 pounds. And then we divide our standard bushel weight of 60 pounds per Avery bushel, gives me 1139.1 .1 bushels loaded. Now if I had good clean dry which is 14.5 percent moisture 60 pound test weight wheat that would be the end of the calculation. Imagine the wheat was on a little on the light side maybe a little on the tough side and hasn't been clean. Let's say we had our combine set good but not perfect and we came out with about 0.75 percent dockage. That gives us 1130 0.6 bushels loaded. Let's say things were a little tough when we were combining. The grain came in at 16.2% moisture. I'm going to use this formula up here. I'm going to plug in that 16.2 and 14.5 as dry. That's going to come out to 0.9801 for another 2% weight loss. Let's take that other 2% off. That gives us 1107 0.5 bushels. And because things were tough, less than ideal growing conditions, let's say we had a test weight of 58 pounds. Because we're selling a tonnage corrected to 60 pounds, we have to use this formula to correct for our weight. 
which brings us down to 1,070.58 bushels that I actually delivered. So despite the fact that I hauled 1,139.1 bushels to the elevator, I'm only getting paid for 1,070.6. Before you jump at me and go, oh no, that's not true. Just because it's not a phantom loss doesn't mean it's actual losses. I said that quite confusing, so let's spin it around. I deliver that 1,139 minus my dockage, so 1,130.6 bushels. Because of the moisture, because of the grade, the elevator will correct the bushels, sorry, correct the price and leave the bushels intact. So I might get dinged for a number two based on my test weight, and I might get dinged on tough grain. They still pay me for that 1130.6 bushels, but rather than paying me, say, $6 a bushel, they start knocking 10 cents off for drying and maybe another 10 or 15 cents for a grade discrepancy. I'll still get paid that amount of bushels for my books to balance, but that's how everything averages out.